Welcome friends! In this tutorial, I'll start by introducing you to Perlin Noise and how it's used to make games. Then we'll hop into Godot and I'll demonstrate how easy it is to use Perlin Noise in your projects. Without further ado, let's get to it! This is an image of random noise. Each pixel is independent from every other pixel and can have any value. One pixel and its neighbors can have wildly differing values. And this is Perlin Noise. Perlin noise is random, but unlike true random noise, its values change gradually like a gradient and are connected continuously when moving from one pixel to the next. Perlin noise is perhaps most famously used for generating procedural terrain. In fact, it forms the basis of the randomly generated worlds of Minecraft. But generating terrain is far from its only use. It can be used to generate an endless number of things from populating asteroid fields in a space sim game, to carving out cavernous water caves at the bottom of an ocean. In my game prototype, Project Root, Perlin noise is used to generate these spirally organic looking roots that must be avoided as the player falls. In my opinion, Perlin noise is an essential tool every game developer should have in their toolbox. So here's a crash course on what you need to know to use Perlin noise in Godot. This is a 2D image of Perlin noise. On the horizontal dimension, there is the x-axis, and on the vertical dimension is the y-axis. For simplicity, let's say each pixel in this image can represent values between negative 1 and 1, where values of 1 are pure black, and values of negative 1 are pure white. And of course, intermediate values are between black and white. If we input two numbers into this Perlin space, an x-value and a y-value, we get back a single number, the Perlin value which exists at the intersection point in the 2D Perlin image. If we give x and y values that intersect in a black region, the return Perlin value will probably be a positive number between 0 and 1. If we choose x and y values that intersect in a white region, the return Perlin value will probably be a negative number between negative 1 and 0. Or if we keep the y value constant and change the x value over time, the Perlin value will change over time randomly. Randomly, yes, but also gradually and continuously. Setting this up in Godot is actually very easy. Godot has a built-in version of the Perlin noise algorithm in the form of a resource called Open Simplex Noise. The Open Simplex Noise resource can be used in a similar way to how we use the curve resource in my How to Use Curves tutorial. Let's jump into Godot and I'll demonstrate how simple it is to use Perlin noise. I've created and saved a new scene that includes a root spatial node called game, a camera, and an outlined unshaded test sphere. In this game, we want to move the sphere up and down randomly. If we simply tried to move the sphere up and down using GDScript's randomize functions, the sphere would just appear to jump around the screen. To get smooth random movement, we'll connect the sphere's height property to a Perlin noise resource. On the scene route, I've already prepared a script for us to start with. The sphere variable is a reference to the sphere instance. The amplitude variable controls how far our sphere can move up and down. The speed variable controls how fast the time variable changes and in turn how fast the sphere moves up and down. In the process function, the speed value gets added to the time variable every frame. To add an open simplex noise resource to our script, we can type export open simplex noise variable Perlin noise. Then we need to create a new instance of the resource. Click on the game root node and in the inspector find the newly exported variable Perlin noise. In the Perlin noise field click empty new open simplex noise. Clicking on the new resource will open and close a list of properties that can be used to change how the Perlin algorithm generates the noise. More on that later. Back in our script, to get a Perlin value, we need an x and a y value. Our time variable will serve as our x value, and will keep the y value constant at 0. The open simplex noise resource comes with a function called getNoise2D. If we give this function our x and y values, it will return a Perlin value. Perlin noise is actually multi-dimensional, and the open simplex noise supports noise in four dimensions. But here we'll just stick with 2D like our example image. Now that we have a Perlin value, we can use it to move our sphere up and down. At the moment, the Perlin value is always between negative 1 and 1. To get our sphere to move up and down beyond just one unit, we can multiply the Perlin value by our amplitude variable. 
Finally, we set the resulting value to the y component of the sphere's translation vector. And with everything in place, we can press F6 to run the scene. As time goes by, our sphere should move smoothly and randomly up and down. But one sphere really isn't enough to visualize the true power of Perlin noise. If I add 1,700 spheres, that might just do the trick. In this demo scene, the spheres move up and down within the range of the amplitude just like our tutorial scene, except here the spheres change green for positive Perlin values, red for negative Perlin values, and white near values of zero. As our time variable changes, the noise generated by the Perlin algorithm moves across the spheres. In theory, the algorithm will continue to generate an infinite amount of random noise so long as our time variable doesn't get so large as to run out of memory, which incidentally is the cause of the Farlands behavior in Minecraft. Using this demo, the properties of the Open Simplex noise resource can be changed and viewed in real time. Going into detail about these settings is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but you can play with them and watch the effects. However, I will say that the seed property is the value that the entire algorithm is based on. Changing the seed value completely changes the Perlin noise values that are subsequently generated. This tutorial and the demo project can be downloaded from the Dave the Dev GitHub page linked below. If you'd like to follow the projects I'm working on, I'll be posting regular devlog updates to my Twitter account, also linked below. Well, that'll do for this tutorial. If you learned something interesting, consider hitting the like button. And if you think I've earned it, subscribe and hit the bell icon to join our growing community. Hope to see you next time. Until then, happy devving.